need to see what's on the screen, so I'm going to be going like that rather than that. <laughs> Might look a little bit random. And I do like a drink as well. <laughs> should, I, should I stand somewhere else? Yeah, over that side. That feels all wrong, but never mind. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Is that better? Mm -hmm. Just get me a drink then. <laughs> <clears throat> I've been looking forward to doing this and um, you know it's definitely one of those occasions where the songs that are brilliant worship so good so good but the words um, it's like it's come straight out of the talk and um, what Karen and Jeff and <coughs> Monica and Sandra getting out there that's come straight out of the talk so um, I have a real sense that God is um, is doing something amongst us and, and in us, so I really do encourage you and me um, that we that we really do open our ears and, and listen and um, get in line with what the Holy Spirit is doing um, in us. So there's the title: Jesus, the Kingdom of God, and Me. Um, what we're going to be doing uh, is this. So I'm going to just very quickly recap the story of Mark's Gospel so far. I haven't got that far. We're going to dig into today's passage, which is Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. If you've got a Bible with you, I would encourage you to have that open. If you don't, don't worry, it will come up on the screen as well. And we're going to be asking mainly two questions. What does this show us about Jesus and how should we respond? So the story so far... John the Baptist prepared the way. Jesus was baptised by John. Jesus sees heaven being torn open and the spirit descends on Jesus like a dove. And he hears a voice from heaven which declares, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. <coughs> and then Jesus is tempted by Satan in the wilderness and defeats Satan there. He begins to proclaim the good news of God and he gathers a group of disciples around him. That's kind of like the, the, the prologue, the introduction to Mark's Gospel. And what is Mark showing us about Jesus? Well, if we actually take a, a step further back into the Old Testament, there's a verse in there which um, just blew my mind, actually. There's a cry to God a cry of desperation and of longing and it's in Isaiah and it says oh that you would rend the heavens and come down and in the baptism account we see the heavens torn open and the spirit descending on Jesus we have there a fulfillment of that cry that you would rend the heavens and come down and save us. In this opening prologue of Mark's Gospel then, Mark is showing us that there has been a new activity of God. Something new is happening. God has come down in the person of Jesus to save his people. The cry has been heard. God has come down in Jesus to save his people. And this is not just a historical event, is it? God is still here. God is present with us now, today, by his spirit, to save his people. Which is why it's so important that we get out onto the streets and go to places to bring this message. Mark is also in these passages uh, giving us a heads up on Jesus before we dive into the rest of the gospel. He's letting us know, we know who Jesus is. We know that Jesus is the Son of God. We know that Jesus has divine authority given by God. And in the passage that we're looking at today, we see that authority demonstrated powerfully through Jesus' teaching and his power over evil spirits. And so we start on the passage. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. 
The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. So Jesus began to teach in the synagogue, and that isn't actually very unusual. Um, that was quite common practice. The chief official of the synagogue could call on anyone who was competent um, to do the address. But usually, the address would be quotes from previous authorised teachers. No one deviated from the accepted tra traditions and the accepted teachings. There were things that you could say, and they were repeated over and over and over again, down through the ages. So when Jesus went to teach, what was it that he was bringing? What did he teach that caused such amazement among the people? Well, if we little, have a little scootle back <coughs> into um, the little previous bit, Mark uh, chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. Sorry, not verse 14, verse 15. I oh, know, it is verse 14, sorry. 14 and 15. That gives us a clue as to what Jesus was teaching. Jesus went into Galilee, it says, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. So that's what Jesus taught. Jesus announced the good news of God. What is that good news? It's this. The time has come. The kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is not a physical place, it's not like the United Kingdom. It's actually the rule or reign of God. The Old Testament looked forward to a day when the reign of God would come and be seen and acknowledged by the whole world. There would be no more disobedience. Salvation would come to the earth. Zechariah 14 and verse 9 says, the Lord will be king over the whole earth. On that day, there will be one Lord, and his name, the only name. The time that the Old Testament was looking forward to, the breaking in of God's reign, was to be a time of salvation and of judgment. It was a time when God would come to restore and to save. And Jesus is saying, the time is now. The time has come. That time has come. It's arrived. It's here. They'd been waiting for centuries. And this day that they were looking forward to, that Zechariah speaks of, was always at some point in the distant future. Is it ever going to come? Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, but you haven't come yet. Jesus says it's now. It's here. Imagine if you'd been engaged male or female, for years and years and years and years. You'd been in a very long engagement, very long, and you were desperate to get married and you wanted to get married. Why can't we get married? And you're engaged and you're engaged and you're engaged. And then your fiancé or fiancé <laughs> arrives at the front door one day <coughs> and says, we're doing it now. It's now. Here's the vicar. We're doing it now. The day has come. You get in that sense of the, the longing, the expectation, the hoping. And then that day arrives and Jesus says that day has come. Now Mark, when he writes the gospel account of Jesus, he wants to show us that although the final coming of the kingdom lies in the future, when we get the new heavens and the new earth, yeah, it is all near now in the person of Jesus himself. How do we know this for sure? Well, look at the signs. Jesus is the one with whom God is well pleased. Jesus is the one who has been given the Spirit of God. And Jesus is the one who has done battle with Satan and has defeated him. God is well pleased with him. God has given him the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is the one who has done the battle with Satan and has defeated him. What's your, is that your response? <laughs> what's, your, what's your spiritual temperature at the moment? I, I, I want to try and encourage you to, to get it, mm. to understand what's going on. Is that a better response? Yes! <laughs> Definitely. 
that's going to have to stay up there for a moment because I haven't got something else. <laughs> Mark will shortly show us Jesus' ministry to the man with an evil spirit in the synagogue, demonstrating again with authority the way in which God's rule has come. Because God's rule doesn't come just with words, does it? It comes with power. So God's reign is spelt out in Jesus, through Jesus. Jesus is, if you like, the embodiment of the new age of the reign of God. The new rule and reign of God broke into the world in Jesus. But it is still growing. It's still breaking in. So look, God is, God's kingdom is still breaking in today, now. Okay, Maybe after the service. You have a need. We want to pray that God will do whatever needs doing because that's what he does. Okay, So the kingdom of God breaking in. No wonder the people were amazed at the teaching. They had never heard anything like it before. No one taught with an authority like Jesus. Loads of other people taught, but no one taught with an authority like Jesus because Jesus' authority came from his Father, from God. Jesus' authority is God's authority. And then, almost on cue, after this amazing announcement about the kingdom of God drawing near, the kingdom of God is here, there's an outcry. What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You're the Holy One of God. Thank you. <laughs> Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. You may wonder why I put that picture up. That says Jesus calming the storm. Well, it's kind of a similar thing because Jesus, if you remember, rebuked the wind and told it to be quiet in the same way that he told the man with the evil spirit, or told the evil spirit, <coughs> not the man, told the evil spirit to be quiet. The storm calmed, the evil spirit left. Jesus has authority over evil spirits. <coughs> Jesus has authority over the supernatural realm. So Jesus has just announced the breaking in of God's rule. The evil spirit within the man <coughs> felt threatened. Well, he would, wouldn't it? It knew its days were numbered. It knew, before anybody else in Mark's account truly does as well, though, it knew who Jesus is. It knew that Jesus is the Holy One of God didn't want to submit to Jesus, but it knew. And so it wants to know, why are you interfering with us, Jesus? Why can't you just leave us alone and let us get on with things the way that they've always been? Such is the power, sorry, such is the person of Jesus, that his mere presence throws the forces of evil into a panic. Such is the person of Jesus that his mere presence in a room or on a street throws the forces of evil into a panic. And so immediately, as we've just read, Jesus rebukes the evil spirit, be quiet, and commands it to come out. Now in the ancient world, people did cast out evil spirits. It, that in itself wasn't an unusual thing, it was the manner in which it was done. It was the authority with which it was done. It was the lack of a song and dance about it. People used to try and cast out evil spirits by magic formulas, incantations, rites. Jesus does it with a word of command. The evil spirit no longer has authority in that individual's life. I know of somebody who struggled for many years 
with a particular form of addiction and was in a church service and I'm not sure if they decided that the time had come and they wanted to be rid of that addiction or whether the evil spirit was manifesting in some way but that individual was prayed for <coughs> and from that point on which was um, five, six, seven years ago has not had not even, not even a hint, not even close, nothing. That addiction gone, power broken, authority of that evil spirit of addiction in that individual's life blown out of the water by Jesus, by his authority. That's the kingdom of God, isn't it, breaking in. We shouldn't be surprised if our meetings are places where the forces of evil manifest themselves but are dealt with efficiently and effectively, calmly, no song and dance. But guys, we shouldn't be surprised if that happens. We should really be expecting it to happen. And so the people say again, that, I mean, their heads are being completely, what is this? A new teaching, and with authority. He even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. <coughs> Jesus' teaching and the exorcism, they both result in amazement and wonder at Jesus' authority. This expelling of the evil spirit is a confirmation of Jesus' authority. He has authority over the supernatural world. When we're going through Mark's gospel, we'll see that he has authority over nature. He has authority over sickness. Hallelujah, he has authority over death. But Mark is showing us Jesus is the one who is uniquely authorised, commissioned and empowered by God to declare the breaking in of God's rule and reign. The new age breaking in. The new age is now as well. It's a new era and we're still in it. So how do we respond? It's a good question. <clears throat> I think it's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> how do, how do it's a lovely respond? question. Thank you. It's lovely. At one level, I hope we respond. Maybe you know, maybe you need a bit of time to kind of let this soak in a little. I, I've been living with this for the past week. Um, when it soaks in a little, but we, we respond with wonder and amazement and a, an increased depth of love for Jesus. And at another level, we respond with increased faith, increased expectation, increased determination. It's very easy to forget that we're living in the period of the rule and reign of God, I think. I forget that frequently. It's easy to look around and to live in despair, fear or complacency. But the kingdom of God came in with Jesus and it did not and has not gone away. It's not like the Roman Empire, is it? It's not like any of the great empires that the earth has ever seen. It's an eternal and everlasting kingdom. Each time somebody turns away from their old life and their old patterns of behaviour, the kingdom of God is coming in. Each time someone is set free from fear, addiction, oppression or ill health, the kingdom of God is breaking in and coming near. Each time someone turns to God and says, Jesus is Lord, the kingdom of God grows and extends. God in the person of Jesus came and comes still to restore, to save and to heal. God's power is sufficient to do it. God's power. Mark's gospel shows us that Jesus has the power and authority to do what needs to be done. <clears throat> really, if you have something that needs to be done in your life, Jesus has the power and the authority to do it. He offers it to you now as the good news of God. 
and we're told to offer that same good news to our friends, families, colleagues and strangers that we might meet on the street. So being honest, this is where I am, or have been, for much of my Christian life. Sitting on the sidelines a little bit. I've been waiting for people to come to me. But the authority that was given to Jesus has been given to all of us too, if we know Jesus. And Jesus says the time has come. The kingdom of God is near, church. The call for us is to go. Amen.